Big Lou with Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. And today I want to show you how to make a great tasting Cajun Creole seasoning. Very similar to the famous one. And if you've watched any of my videos over the uh, last month or so, I've been using this store-bought stuff um, because I had it. I got it uh, on a camping trip. Fella didn't want to take it home with him, so he sent it with me, and it stayed in my cabinet a few months because I usually make the Tony Saturay stuff myself. Um, but I had one of these little um, shot glass things with the measurements on it, and I dropped and broke it. And until I remembered to pick one up at the store, again, I wasn't able to make my own anymore. Um, I want to tell you how I make it. My grandfather used to make it. Back in the day, it wasn't available at the store. If you wanted a Creole seasoning, you made your own, you know? And um, there's a fellow named Tony Saturay. that printed this cookbook in 1972. And on the front page of it, uh, it's actually not the front page, it's that right after, it's page three. All right, right after the table of contents and all that, it shows you how to make his uh, stuff. Now, the original recipe calls for one ounce of MSG sold under the Accent brand, all right? I don't put that in there anymore, haven't for the last 12 years. But my grandfather made this when I was a kid growing up. He always had it. I always loved going to his house because he had it. And um, when I got to be about 16, 17 years old in the 80s, he gave me a recipe for it. Legend has it that this stuff was so good that Tony quit uh, publishing this edition of the cookbook from 1972, and in 1975, he released another edition, and instead of having the recipe on the front page, he had an order form on the front page. Um, they didn't have the internet back in the 70s, you know. And um, anyway, this is uh, what Tony started out with. I think the recipe may be, have a little bit different. The store brand says it has... Um, ingredients it says it's got the ingredients listed that I'm gonna show you all right and um, it has silicon dioxide in it to prevent caking well the recipe if you make it at home it doesn't have that silicon dioxide I don't know what silicon dioxide is but I don't want to eat too much of it you know um, so I'll show you how to make it at home now I'm not trying to violate any copyright laws I'm giving credit it comes from the Tony Saturay's book it's not my recipe I do leave the accent out of it the MSG out of it and um, this recipe is available on the internet. I found it at food.com and other websites. So you can get this recipe uh, on the internet for free. You might as well get it from Big Lou Barbecue YouTube channel as well, all right? Um, and I'm not knocking Tony's, I love them. If, but if you wanna make this stuff at home, I'm gonna show you how to do it. By the way, the measurements are in tablespoons and ounces, which is the United States customary system not metric because we're American I know metric may make better sense and make better math but it's not as intuitive people don't comprehend the metric system as easy you don't believe me fractions are easier than decibels to just comprehend like what's one-third if I said what's one-third of a foot you'd say four inches right you can figure out one-third but what if I said what's one-third of ten centimeters or 10 grams. That's right, 3.333333, and I can keep on saying threes and never get there, right? So fractions are just easier. So that's why we got this in the marking units, all right? By the way, two tablespoons, one ounce. Well, half an ounce, one tablespoon. Understand? Good. Big Lou Barbecue. Hope you enjoy watching it. This intro's gone on too long, y'all. Hey, stick around at the end. I got a little story I want to tell you about Tony Saturates, all right? Big Lou Barbecue. Okay, in order to make this Creole season, you're going to need a whole box of salt. You're going to need some chili powder, some cayenne pepper, also called red pepper, black pepper, garlic powder. This stuff is good, y'all. You need something to shake it in. I just used put it in this little uh, quart size mason jar. Open it up. Cut the top off the um, off the salt, just like this. Well, better get me a sharper knife, don't I? There we go. That knife sharp. All right, dump the whole thing in here. All right, 
get you one of these little things. And we're gonna put an ounce and a half of black pepper in here, or a little more if you want. If you wanna put a little more, put a little more. We're gonna go an ounce and a half of black pepper. Sorry, something's beeping in the background there. I think it's a coffee pot. So there's an ounce. Now we'll go a little more. An ounce and a half, all right? You can use a shot glass if you want to, but this one has the markings on it. And there we go, there's the ounces right there. So I wanna to go to that line. Ounce and a half of black pepper. Ounce and a half, I mean, sorry, two ounces of red pepper. Two ounces cayenne pepper. So just fill it up. You want a little spice here? Fill it up. Two ounces of cayenne pepper. Like that. And maybe a tad more. All right. An ounce of chili powder. A whole ounce of chili. I'm just going to dip that in there like that right there. Ounce of chili powder. Ounce of garlic powder. Gonna open it here. All right, get an ounce of garlic powder in there. Like that. Put the top on it. Now it looks like some of those um, sand sculpture things people put in jars with the colored sand. But what you gotta do now is shake, rattle, and roll. Just keep shake, rattling, and rolling until you get it all mixed up. And you can use this for just about anything. And it's the starter for most of the rubs and stuff that I make. Like if I make a pork rub, I mix about 50% of this with 50% sugar, add a little cumin, add a little um, ground mustard. That's a pretty good pork rub. Um, for seafood, you can add a little bit of dill, a little bit of basil, maybe a little bit of thyme or rosemary, and you got a pretty good seafood mixture. All right? Um, but just for jambalayas, gumbos, whatever, just keep shake, rattle, and roll, man, till you get it all mixed up. Keep it in the uh, cabinet. You got a basic Creole seasoning. Just about everything you want. Look at that. It's starting to look good. Try it. You'll like it. Hey, y'all, I want to show you a brief story about Tony Saturates. Hope you enjoyed seeing how to make the mix. And remember, the original recipe had um, MSG in it, accent, but I don't put that in there. Um, and we're Tony Saturates is a great company. I, I'm loyal to their products, and this is why. Back in about 2001, November 2001, I was going camping with my wife and um, was planning a trip over the Thanksgiving break. And I was in the Academy Sports and Outdoors, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on Airline Highway, across from the Cortana Mall. And uh, I was in the uh, camping section and I met this gentleman and we talked for a little while. He was an older gentleman, he was probably in his late 60s and I was about 31 at the time. And um, then I met him in the fishing section, we talked about fishing. And then I met him again in the outdoor cooking section and we talked again and I reached for a bag of Oak Alley brand jambalaya mix, which is pretty good jambalaya mix. And he asked me if I made jambalaya from a mix and I said, I can make it from scratch. In those days, I wasn't very good at making it from scratch. I'm much better nowadays. And um, he said, uh, he said, have you ever used Tony Saturay's brand? And I said, no. He says, well, that's pretty good. You ought to try it. And I told him that I like Tony Saturay's and that I make the seasoning myself. He says, well, how do you do that? And I told him the story about the, the cookbook and uh, my grandfather having it and me getting it that I told you at the beginning of the episode here. And um, he said, yes, I remember that. That's all he said. It's the only clue I had to his identity. I still didn't know who this man was. But he asked for my address and my name. And uh, by the way, my first name's Robert. And um, he said, uh, 
He said, I'd like to send you something. So I gave the man my address. Well, I get back home. We let my wife and I live in the trailer park in those days. Get back home to the trailer. And my wife says, you gave a man an address? He says, you don't know what's going on. The world's going crazy. We did think the world was going crazy in 2001, by the way. That It was just a crazy time, all right? And, um, and she says, they're mailing anthrax all over, and the news says it's coming from Baton Rouge. I said, honey, I, think, I don't think this guy's the anthrax mailer. I said, he was a nice fella. About three days later, UPS truck pulls up to the trailer. My wife's like, what'd you order now? And I said, I didn't order anything. I don't know what it is. I go out to the UPS truck, get this big, huge box. I got to carry with my arms, y'all, and bring it inside this huge box. And I cut it open, and there's all these Tony Saturase products in there. There's the hot sauces. There's the more spice mix. There's a low sodium uh, spice. There is the gumbo mix, the roux, the... Um, jambalaya mix, all sorts of pasta mixes and things like this. There's all kinds of Tony Saturay's products in this box. It was a huge box. My wife and I probably ate on this for a year and a half, two years. It was good stuff. And a little thank you card that said, hey, Robert, really enjoyed meeting and talking to you in the academy the other day. He said, enjoy these Tony Saturay's products. Uh, signed, C Don Saturay, CEO, Tony Saturay's Corporation. And because um, of that, I am loyal to Tony Saturday's Corporation. Thank you, Tony's. Anyway, the uh, recipe I gave you, though, I'm not the only one that has this on the Internet. It's available at food.com, too. You can look up Tony Saturday's and other places, too. So um, anyway, this is how I make the seasoning. I put it in this little jar and shake it. Y'all enjoy it. Big Lou Barbecue.